some areas in the double wide that need some tender loving care. <laughs> because of they're just really gross they're eyesores or there's dog hair all over it <laughs> so I need to tackle all of that stuff but I really just need to get ready for the next big makeover that we're doing because I am not prepared at all and I'm ready to hit it wide open I was not planning on a makeover in this area I'm kind of like a mood makeover -er, so like I can I can make over places you know I can make over my house you know random rooms in my house but I find my most favorite makeovers I ever do are makeovers that are last minute and unexpected because I'm just so focused and I just want that thing done. So I have an unexpected area we're going to be starting to make over on in the next few days and I need to get that prepped and ready. So I gotta kick my rear end into gear and I gotta get productive. Well what's up everybody? It's that time of the week that you love, that you look forward to. It's the grocery haul. So without further ado, let's get started. Come on! We're gonna go in and get started right here with this new and improved creepier Angel Baby TP. We've got a big old thing of paper towels, this jug of Milo's unsweet tea, big old thing of milk, one, two, and three loaves of bread. Oh, snap. Hey, Rena, what's the sourdough for? Oh, you know it. We need a hashtag TikTok Sandwich Nation. No, we probably won't do that. But, yeah, TikTok sandwiches are where it's at. We've got some noodles for some skets. All snap. We've got one, two, three, and four of these active dry yeast. Could that mean we have some more homemade pizza in our foreseeable future? We're just going to wait until she says something. Raina. Do we have homemade pizza in our foreseeable future? Uh, yeah. Woohoo! We've got some flour tortillas, some all purpose flour. We've got the ultra dish liquid and the ultra dish liquid littler bottle. We got us some hand soaps here. So we've got some coconut water and mango. Another coconut water and mango. And cherry blossoms. We've got three boxes of this mac and cheese. We've got our lovely restaurant style Italian dressing. This is for those TikTok sandwiches which are literally one of the tastiest things in the world. And I promise you this. Along with that same recipe, we've got some pepperoncini. We got the kiddos some cups. So this one says good vibes only. This one says just a little extra. <laughs> and then keep smiling, keep shining. We got some white forks and spoons because let's face it, sometimes you don't feel like washing a bunch of silverware. And in the same way that you don't like washing silverware, sometimes you don't like washing plates. So we've got some paper plates here. We've got two boxes of the cheeseburger, macaroni, hamburger helper. I love this stuff. Three bags of these buttermilk pancakes. These things are actually really good. Really quick uh, breakfast items when like you need to get the day going super quick. Ooh, marinara sauce. So a minute ago, Raina said that homemade pizzas were in our foreseeable future, and this just confirms it. So I'm down. With that uh, TikTok sandwich recipe, we've got the Italian seasoning that goes in it. Ooh, this is new. But we've got some beefsteak fajita. We haven't had that in a while. We've got some pepperoni and cheese filled hot pockets. Breaded fish sticks. 
Right here, we've got a big old thing of Crisco, the butter flavor. A thing of pepperonis. We've got the salami for the TikTok sandwiches, the turkey breast for the TikTok sandwiches, the Black Forest ham for the TikTok sandwiches, and the sauce provolone for the TikTok sandwiches. We've got two cans of this Hunt meat sauce, a double pack of butter, two bags of Italian style, what is this, finely shredded mozzarella. Blackened chicken alfredo. I'm down. I love the, um, Zatarain's puts out a microwavable version of this and it's really good. Looks like Rena's got about six bags of the spicy sweet chili uh, Quest chips. I've got vegetable fried rice here. We've got <laughs> Michelangelo's baked ziti. Um, I'm wondering if they mean Michelangelo the artist or Michelangelo the turtle. We've got two boxes of buttermilk waffles, along with two boxes of this cheese stuffed crust pepperoni pizza, which I think we're actually about to eat. We've got three of these microwavable cheese pizzas. Hey, I just got done talking about these. The microwavable blackened chicken alfredo. This stuff is literally so good. We've got three of these little dino, what are these, dino fries and nuggets? That's different. And a little thing of macaroni. Oh yeah. So today is going to be a straight up hashtag Tater Nation because look at this hashtag Tater Nation. 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 You've got um. You've got four bags of russet potatoes. That's that's. I mean, I'm not complaining. Um, I'm down. We've got one, two, I think these are the smaller bags, and then we've got these two, which are the bigger bags. Ooh, we've got some AMC Theater popcorn, barbecue tater chips, regular tater chips. We've got a big old thing of oranges, along with the smaller halos. Rainy got me some vitamins because she wants me to be healthy. Two packs of the mini cucumbers. A thing of shredded lettuce for our TikTok sandwiches. Ooh, check this out. Rena um, got this because she wanted to try this for the first time. Dragon fruit. That is so cool. You see why they call it dragon fruit. It literally looks like scales. Again, for the TikTok sandwiches, we've got some onions. Extra butter popcorn. I'm guessing we're gonna have a movie night soon. A thing of sugar. A thing of cornstarch. Check this out. So, I love chicken, right? But let me tell you what, one of the closest things to my heart is chicken legs, but Rena hates chicken legs. Ain't that right, Rena? Chicken legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she got those, I'm going to assume for me. She hates chicken legs. But that's why we also have chicken breasts. Got a big old thing of sweet tea here. Some Purex. I always get cracked up as to, I, I'm guessing it's Suavitel, but it could be Suavitel, 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 all kinds of different spellings, but yeah, it's Suavitel. We got three things of Nanners there. We also, you can't see that, you know that. And then finally, we got this big old thing of water. And yeah, that's the grocery haul for today. We got, we were starting to be a little bare, so we definitely needed to make a a quick run to the grocery store and now we're stocked back up so yeah that's the end of our journey i'm glad that you took it with me it was so nice to have friends with me i'm gonna turn this back over to my lovely wife and i'm gonna see you guys later see ya i have the lizard fruit here and i've never it's not dragon fruit i've never eaten one of these in my life i don't even know how to cut it or anything but i really want to try it because i'm having to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables on this health journey and i'm ashamed to admit i don't know a lot of fruits and vegetables that I like. And that's because I haven't tried a lot of fruits and vegetables. I just found out last year what a Brussels sprout tasted like. Like, I need to up my game. So I'm trying to find different things other than like bananas, because bananas are high in like carbs. And while I'm not doing keto keto, I'm still very 
being very mindful of my carb intake. But I mean, I eat oranges all the time. I eat grapes all the time, stuff like that. But I've never had one of these. I need to like try some like honeydew. I've had honeydew, but it was a long time ago. I need to try some honeydew, uh, mangoes, peaches, plums, things like that. Because those are all things that I don't eat. I eat peaches if they're in a crap ton of corn syrup. But I don't ever just eat a peach. So I'm starting off my fruit tasting journey with this dragon fruit. This thing was five bucks. It better taste like gold. Joey and the kiddos are actually going to eat it with fruit. me. Oh! Woo! I see that! What? Yeah, I see the people eat dragon fruit. Have you? It's very um cuttable. It's very nice and like cuttable. Huh. Oh, and are you trying it? Let's try it, right? One, two, three. Why does it make me think of strawberries? I thought it would be a lot sweeter than that. I was expecting it to be sweeter than that. But I mean, it's not bad. It's I'll good. eat it if you guys don't eat it. Will you eat it? Yeah, it's I'll $5. eat it. dollars Can you cut me up some more and I'll eat it right now? Yeah. Okay, meal plan. So, <laughs> meal plan. These groceries have to last us for two weeks. That's gonna be really easy with the 42 bags of potatoes right. that I bought. I gotta transfer all this from my brain to my meal plan and my planner. But just a rough draft of what our meal plan for the next two weeks is gonna look like. We're going to do barbecue chicken legs, fried chicken legs, and this baked chicken and rice leg, chicken leg and rice casserole. That's three meals that we're getting out of that bag of chicken legs. I don't eat chicken legs, so it's completely between Shane and the kids, and that'll work out just fine, because I'll have me a little salad or something like that. Shane and Jolie love the dragon fruit, the rest of us do not. So three meals out of the chicken legs. Then we got that new pack of chicken. So we're gonna be doing chicken, like baked chicken, cause I can eat that. I'm gonna have like, I'm gonna meal prep me a bunch of baked chicken, like with some seasonings and lemon peppers and stuff in one of my little bento things with some green beans for the week. But the fam's also gonna have baked chicken, so that's four. And then we're also gonna have uh, chicken and fried rice, like sort of hibachi style, chicken and fried rice. And then we're gonna have chicken and dumplings. They're going to have chicken and dumplings, but that's six. We also have baked ziti because we have a lot. Y'all are going to see in the next video what we're doing, and it is wild. It is crazy, and it is time-consuming, and I had to pick fast things, but I tried to pick fast things that weren't like corn dogs and stuff like that because I want them to have some nutrition. You know, I want them to have nutrition throughout the week. I'm having nutrition with my baked chicken and green beans, so I want them to have nutrition, and so I thought maybe like with the ziti I have some salad mix in there I thought maybe with the ziti we could have like side salad for them and that would get their greens in I'm not just making changes for myself around here like if you noticed we got a crap ton of fruit and we also got more vegetables than we usually get I'm trying to do it for the whole fam but I'm gradually doing it for them because it ain't their fault they eat like they do like it's learned behavior they eat what they've been given and so I'm not gonna I'm gonna shock them <laughs> with a completely new diet like I'm gradually adding in things that I know that they'll eat and new things for them to try like the dragon fruit we're also having steak fajitas hamburger helper spaghetti dirty rice if you hear my kiddos they're playing with their friends on the game um dirty rice which is like hamburger ground hamburger meat with in with rice kind of like a I think it's like some, something like a jumbo ice sort of thing. I really want to try jumbo ice so bad. I've never tried it in my life. I want to try that so bad. But we're having Dirty Ross, DiGiorno pizzas, one night for them. Homemade pizzas with my famous homemade pizza dough that y'all saw me make in the last video. The kids are super excited about that. And then a couple of fin for yourself, not really, but a grab what you won't eat a bunch of leftover days in the week because of the fact we are gonna be so busy this week. For breakfast, y'all saw in the grocery haul, I'm not doing a bunch of homemade muffins, homemade pancakes, homemade waffles, and freezing them this two weeks. I'm doing simple and I'm doing quick and it's not ideal, but it's convenient for right now and that's definitely what we need this week. Hey bud. So for breakfast, a lot of waffles, a lot of pancakes, a lot of toast, things like that. For lunch, we've got some mini frozen pizzas for the kiddos to pop in the microwave. We've got some dino nuggets, some mac and cheeses. No, we've no, got no. It's, it's, the nuggets are normal nuggets. It's the fries that are shaped like uh, dinos. Wait, the fries were shaped like dinos? Yeah. So regular say, nuggets say, and the fries, say, dino oh, fries. Dino nuggets. No, I realized. No, it's the fries. <laughs> they have some of those. They have uh, leftovers, of course, and then stuff for sandwiches, PBs and Js. 
um, like sandwiches with shredded lettuce on it, things like that, TikTok sandwiches. Um, TikTok sandwiches will probably be for a lunch and a dinner. <laughs> And a dinner because we can usually get two rounds out of the TikTok ingredients for our family. So we'll probably have that one day this week for lunch and then one day for dinner. We also have things like Hot Pockets and stuff for lunch as well. Sometimes I eat those for breakfast. <laughs> I can never, but sometimes they do. But they like the Hot Pockets for breakfast. Then we have a never-ending thing of potatoes. So I can even throw in some shepherd's pie in there. I can throw in a lot of fried taters for breakfast. Shane <gasps> loves fried taters for breakfast. So on the weekends we can do fried taters for breakfast. All that and then baked potatoes. The kids eat baked potatoes all week long. If they want lunch and I don't have anything planned then they will go bake them in potato, put them some butter on it and that's what they'll have for lunch. Lots of fruits to snack on and then we also have the popcorn and the chips and I have my Quest chips too. So we've got an ample amount of stuff to last us for two weeks. It has to last us for two weeks because I used half the grocery budget on it. We spent $500 in total, but that was also with our monthly house stuff like laundry detergent, laundry softener, dish soap, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. So the only thing I'll have to get more of is probably toilet paper and paper towels. You good? Everything else is taken care of. We have plenty of toothpaste, we have plenty of shampoo and stuff. So all that's taken care of, we'll just have to go back and get toilet paper and paper towels midway through the month. Our whole grocery budget is $1,000 now. Um, it used to be 14, then I brought it down to 12, and now I've brought it down to 1,000. I don't know if I'm gonna get much slower than that, to be honest with you, because it's, it's, I've been pushing it here the last few weeks, but I've been trying to stay with that $1,000 budget. The thing that gets us is it's a $1,000 budget for six people, but I also add my home goods into my grocery budget just because it's easier for me to budget. So I, we're really doing $850 a month worth of food for the family of six, and then 150 of household necessities. That is pretty good. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to get it any lower. Not if I'm incorporating fresh fruits and vegetables and stuff. There's no way I'm getting it below $850 a month for a family of six. Maybe if I start shopping at Aldi, but Aldi is just not as convenient as Walmart grocery pickup. I go back and forth all the time. I'm sure here in the next few months, uh, Walmart, Walmart will do something to make me mad and I'll go to Aldi. <laughs> I only go to Aldi when Walmart makes me mad. So dog food is also added into our grocery budget. We spend $100 on dog food every month. So in reality, you can really say we're getting away with $800 worth of groceries a month for a family of six. What I've been doing is save money on dog food so that it can stay under $100, at $100, under $100 a month because I have a big, I have two big dogs and three small dogs. It's a lot of dog food. I've been using our regular arms, which my dogs have been on arms for the longest time. But I've been also adding in the kibbles and bits as sort of filler food. Like I've been mixing the two together. The meatballs that have molasses and stuff that I keep in the freezer. Those paired with the items paired with the kibbles and bits, like make sure that they get all their nutrition too. But I've been mixing the two dog foods together just to make it stretch longer and they really love the kibbles and bits. They prefer it over the items. They pick out the kibbles and bits, but the items, I think, judging from the back of the items bag, the items is better like nutritionally for them. Kibbles and bits just taste good. Kibbles and bits is kind of like the junk food of dog food. Cammy just put me live over on Instagram. <laughs> so I was gonna go ahead and I was like, shoot, I'm already live, might as well be live. And it wouldn't work, it stopped working for some reason. And I was literally in Hobby Lobby. I was gonna have like, uh, y'all come along with me and shopping and stuff. But it turns out I, I had y'all come and shopping with me anyway because I ran into so many of you guys in there. Shane was on one side of the store talking to people. I was on the other side of the store. At one point, he was talking to one of you guys and I was talking to one of you guys at the end of each aisle cap. <laughs> so I got to shop with you guys, just not alive. Hey, whenever I die, it's gonna be one of those days I remember because I got to hug so many of you guys, so many of my friends. That like it was, I, I was a mess. I was a crying mess in the middle of, of Hobby Lobby. Absolutely, you know, I, I meet everybody in Hobby Lobby. Sometimes Walmart, and sometimes Ross, and sometimes Mall. But a majority of the people I meet, they're in Hobby Lobby. So I'm thinking about just making Hobby Lobby our meeting spot because it's always there. It's something though that you know I get to comment back with you guys, and I don't get to do it as much as I would love to because there's so many comments like I, I try to spend at least an hour a day in the comments and I'm trying to go with different videos so that you know I can reach different people and not, not the same people every single time but I don't get to a whole lot of comments so when I get to actually stop in the store and converse with conversate conversate converse conversate with you guys 
I feel so blessed. Like it puts into perspective that I actually have a friend. Cause sometimes on my end, it can feel like I'm just talking kind of like to air. And it, like not all the time, but sometimes I, it, it just don't set with me that I have so many friends. But when I start, like, when I start meeting y'all out in public, I'm like, crap, I actually have friends. And y'all, I mean, I'm too emotional for a, for a hit you in the face moment like that in the middle of the store surrounded by y'all. I can say this from experience though. I have, we have the kindest community on this platform. Y'all are always so respectful whenever you see me. You're always so kind. All of y'all today, at least in some manner, said, I don't want to intrude, but can I hug you? Or I don't want to intrude, but can I say hi? And it's like, don't ever, if you see me on public, don't ever worry about intruding or anything like that. I live to talk to you guys. I don't live to get recognized or anything like that. Like, I, I don't want to just smile, take a picture and go. Like, I've done that before. And I'll do that, absolutely. If you don't want to talk to me, you just want to get a picture with me, I'll do that, absolutely. I'll do that, gladly. But my my prime moments are whenever I, I can talk with you guys. I can find out about you. you. You tell me about yourself. I get to know your name. Shoot, sometimes we get into such conversation, I get to know your hobbies and stuff. And I love that. It always comes with the story of either my mom used to watch you and she passed away. Or my, my sister-in-law and I watch your videos on Mondays. And it's just like... I find out so much when I get to actually see you guys and it don't feel like I'm talking to air anymore and it's not always like that I sometimes I, I know you know whenever I get vulnerable and stuff I, it puts me in perspective and I realize I'm talking to my friends but sometimes it can get to when you when you're used to not having a lot of friends when you're used to not having anybody listen to you it doesn't matter what the numbers say on the videos it can still feel like there's nobody there, kind of. Because I'm not used to people listening to me. I'm not used to people listening to me. Oh, I'm going to cry again. I can't. Bye. I'll, I'll see you in a minute. It is Saturday. That means we have the whole weekend to get this fireplace moved. Today, we have to get it done. No questions asked. No nothing. No questions about it. It has to be taken apart, disassembled for like the, the frame and stuff has to be reassembled oh. over here today. The bones has to get done today if we're getting this thing done this weekend. It's inevitable. We got to get it done. Good thing is we're working really fast. We've already got one side of it done. We're working on the back now and then all we have is two other sides and the cosmetic part of it will be taken care of we'll just be left with the frame and we're trying to reuse every single thing we possibly can so that we're not losing any money we're just adding money to the project because nobody wants to lose money on a project so everything that we're taking apart we can use either with this project or another project that we're talking about we've kind of went through and and taken stock of everything that we have and kind of brainstormed as to what we could use it to to make sure we're not losing money on this project are you guys as shocked as I am that we are in this area of the double wide again? <laughs> I have a good reason. So I actually was okay with this porch looking like it did. This was the very first thing that we made over when we moved here and I really liked it. There were some things that I knew I was going to change right off the bat as soon as we did it like that faux stone up in the front there. You guys saw me start saving for a whole new method directly after we put that up because I wasn't happy with it. And then we had went in and we had sanded the back of it here and we had kind of tried to fix some areas where we messed up because we had never built an outdoor fireplace before and it was a learning curve. It was a total learning experience. So we did some things the way we shouldn't have done it, but we tried going back in and fixing it. It wasn't until Shannon and I were outside and he made a little comment saying that he would like to see the kids playing in the yard. And I was like, what are you saying, Shane? And I was like, you never mentioned that you didn't like this here like I we had went through the blueprints I gave him my you know my theory what I thought it would look like and what I thought it should look like and he had said okay let's place it here you know if you want to do it there we'll do it there never not once mentioned he didn't like it here <laughs> and boy did I pitch a fit not for the fact that he didn't like it here but for the fact that he didn't tell me he didn't like it here because my main mission in making over our home is making over our home it's not the marina show I take into account very much so the things that my kiddos and Shane want to see in this house or would like to see in this house. It is so cold out here. It should not be this cold in the middle, in the end of March. At the almost beginning of April, it should not be this cold. But here we are looking like bananas in pajamas. Banana in pajamas. Me walking over here like I'm about to finish this. No, I'm good while I'm walking over here to stand away on Shane. <laughs> 
so as soon as he made that little comment, I began to think, and I asked him, I was like, okay, I'm willing to move it if you're willing to move it for me. <laughs> if you're willing to put in the work, I'm willing to let it be moved somewhere else. So I was like, you know what? We had been having issues with the dogs coming on the porch, you know, it being a total disaster. This porch is supposed to be like a safe haven, a relaxing spot, and it has been the total opposite. We have worked on it with woodworking. We have sawed on it. The dogs have got it all muddy. It's permanently muddy all the time. It is not a relaxing spot at all. So, I started thinking when we started talking about moving this thing, I started thinking about ways that I could enhance this area without losing any money. I did not want to lose any money other than when I absolutely had to, which the only part of this whole thing that we're doing right now that we lost money on was that faux stone. And that was pretty much inevitable anyway because I was not happy when I bought that stuff and it was non-refundable like I could not get my money back I did learn a huge valuable lesson with that whole thing though I'm not ever buying anything like that online without seeing touching and feeling it right then and there like if I get anything like this it's going to be something I can feel something I see in person so I know exactly what I'm paying for especially when you buy something custom so right off the bat initially we saw that loss of money coming we saw that coming a mile away whenever we put up that stone but we don't want to lose any more money so we're even saving the screws you guys will see at the end of this video we have a huge pile of like a hundred screws that we're saving to reuse we're also reusing every bit of this wood Shane's taking off of this right now we're not using this on the fireplace though we're, because the fireplace is being moved to another part of the porch and it's at an angle well that ruins the whole design that ruins the whole framework we have to like fix the framework and add to the framework but we can't add to the design because the design is fit for this specific size of fireplace so I was like, we can't lose all that money. That was a lot of money for that wood. So we're reusing the wood for something else on the porch and then just doing an additional thing to the fireplace once we get it moved to where we're moving it to. The one thing we are keeping, though, is obviously the fireplace insert and then the mantle. We're definitely reusing this mantle. There's no need to get rid of it or to change it because it's fine the way it is. I asked you guys if it was okay if I would do this in parts, like this whole porch revamp in parts. I don't have it in me to do one full run through of it, only because it wasn't long <laughs> since we've been out here. And the only reason we're doing this now is because, first of all, if Shane says he doesn't like something, I mean, he works too dang hard on stuff to not like it. Like, I will give him the world if I can, and I can't right now, <laughs> so I can give him this. <laughs> so, obviously, we're moving it now because of that, but it's beginning to feel like spring outside and the kids are outside the dogs are outside we're outside at least 50 percent of our time and we want this to be done before it gets smack dab in the heat of summer and it's too hot to work on it because last year when we worked on this we were leaving the summer and going into winter and it was way too cold <laughs> to work on this i was like never again so right now it's the perfect temperature outside to get this stuff done out here so that plays a huge part in me asking you guys if it's okay if i do this in parts because i know a lot of people don't like that and i i I feel you I'm the same way but when I get done with this area you'll see why we're not just making over the porch I'm not slapping a rug on this thing and being like ah ha, ha, beautiful like this thing's getting totally you won't believe it it's getting totally made over and we're doing it right now so that we can spend this spring season and the summer season even into the fall out here enjoying this space as a family and if you guys are okay with that and you guys let me do it in parts it will help me a lot get it out there and work on it faster because if i'm being honest with you right now i'm doing a voiceover at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> my days especially throughout the week are packed full and if i can do this in parts then that means i can film during the week in the evenings and that's going to help me get this done so much faster Faster. We're taking, well, Shane, <laughs> very bold of me to say we're. <laughs> He's taking it piece by piece in sections apart and then laying it beside each other so we can keep in our minds what exactly goes where. Because like I said, we're moving this to a different area of the porch and our porch is at a slant. So the whole frame is going to have to be revised a little bit, but spoiler alert it's five o'clock in the morning and i'm huddled in here in my closet doing this voiceover but shane and i are already halfway through the next part of this video do you see why it's easier for me to do it in parts because i can already be editing while i'm filming in the evenings i can be editing here at five o'clock in the morning in my closet <laughs> but spoiler alert shane's already revised it and it's already turned it's turned out fantastic like he has outdone himself once again he always does like i said we don't know a lot we learn by trying we learn completely by experience and this man if he knows how to do anything 
anything, I mean, he knows how to be a good person. He knows how to make me smile. He knows how to take care of our family. But if he knows how to do anything else, he knows how to learn from experience and learn from his mistakes. And he does that amazingly. Look at all these screws that we're saving. What have I done? <laughs> I am pumped to bring you guys along to show you exactly what we're doing. You're going to be like, what? Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I will see y'all soon in the next one.